All right. So tonight we are going to be talking about the children of God. Who are the children of God and how do we become children of God? Our passage of scripture tonight is 1 John uh, chapter 3, verses 1. So if you've got your Bible handy or your cell phone or your iPhone with this passage of scripture on, I'd like you to open it up and we start reading verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has um, not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he, Jesus, is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Beautiful passage of scripture, verse 1 and 2. Uh, verse 3, and everyone who has this hope in Jesus purifies himself. Just as he, Jesus, is pure, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. Um, and sin is lawlessness. Just keep that in the back of your mind and also just highlight that if you can. Verse 5, and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him, Jesus, there is no sin. 6, whoever abides in him, whoever lives in him, does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him or known him. Verse 7, little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous, just as Jesus is righteous. Remember, we don't get our righteousness by being self, as in self-righteous. We get our righteousness through Jesus Christ. Verse 8, he who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9, whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Verse 10, in this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Yes, you heard right. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Verse 11, for this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Verse 12, not as Cain who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother's was righteous. Verse 13, do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. Verse 14, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother Let's stop there. I want to identify brother. We're hearing a lot of brother here. So I looked up brother. Brother in the Greek is Adelphos. It means a brother, whether born of the same two parents or only of the same father and or mother. In other words, a blood brother. Or brethren in Christ. Brothers by blood, Christians, as those who are exalted to the same heavenly place. So in other words, brethren, as in brothers and sisters in Christ, um, the brothers, as in the brotherhood, as in men, and obviously the brethren, and also we are of the body of Christ. Okay, so it's very clear that it's not talking about anybody outside of the Christian name. Um, uh, let's carry on. Uh, Da, da, da. Okay, so it says, verse 15, whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Quite a statement. Verse 16, by this we know love. Remember, God is love. By this we know love, because he, Jesus, laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down 
our lives for our brethren, which means our brothers and sisters in Christ and our brothers. Verse 17, but whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother or sister in need and shuts up his heart from them, he does, the, uh, how does the love of God live in him? Very good question. If we have an abundance of whatever and we see our brothers <clears throat> and sisters in, in Christ that are battling, we need to help them, not just verbally, but to help them um, if they need help. 18, my little children, let us not love uh, in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Verse 19, by this we know that we are of the truth. The truth is Christ. Remember, John 14, 6 says that our uh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except through him. By this we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before Christ. <clears throat> Verse 20, for if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. See, a lot of people twist that word a little bit and they say, well, whatever we, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> whatever we ask God, he'll give it to us. But they forget that second passage of the scripture, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. You see, we can't just expect everything and anything from God. We got to do his commandments, keep his commandments. Verse 23, and this, is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us command. 24. Now, he who keeps his commandments lives in him, abides in him, and he in him, that's us. And by this we know that he lives in us by the spirit whom Jesus has given us. So we are reminded that the that the the our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians six it tells us that our bodies are the temple, and the Holy Spirit lives in us. But it also tells us in John fifteen that the Spirit of the Lord lives in us, and we live in the Lord. Hence, us being the children of God. Now that we've read the passage of Scripture, we can discuss how we can exegete this passage. And I think it's important for us to know, firstly, that there are two kingdoms. Okay, there's the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light. And then we have the devil's kingdom, which is the kingdom of darkness. Only God's children go to God's kingdom, heaven. And the devil's children land up in the kingdom of darkness. Eventually, that leads to hell. So I want us to read verse 10 again, because there's something important for us to know there. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. So I want us to have a look at that a little, and, and you might know, but I'd like you to be a little patient with me, because it's I'm leading to, to a place. The children of God, us, okay, if we don't, if we do practice righteousness, then we are of God. But here it says, whoever does not practice righteousness, as in not being in Christ, having the righteousness of Christ, nor is he who does not love his brother. So whoever does not practice righteousness, as in you are not saved, you're not born again, you don't have a regenerated spirit, then you are not of God. So in verse 10, it basically gives us a clear indication that if we are not righteous, then we are not of God. And very important, nor is he who does not love his brother. Remember the Greek word, Adelphos. So that means we must love 
our brothers and sisters in Christ. We must love our blood brothers, our family, okay? We must love them, but it also says that we must love the body of Christ because they are brothers and sisters in Christ and we will once again be together with Jesus in heaven. So we are all the body of Christ and we will all celebrate the 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 uh, the rapture and we'll all go to heaven and we'll be in heaven with God with Jesus that's that's the promise that we are children of the most high God many Christians are offended by this passage of scripture and the reason being they don't like to think that they are devil's children I've spoken to many people and many people often have said to me but George you can't say that because God loves everybody. Jesus died for everybody. So how can they be children of the devil? I mean, surely the devil can't create people. But you see, the passage of scripture that they are trying to twist is that if the Bible says they are children of the devil, they are unrighteous. So that means there is. There are. <laughs> Um, because of poor teaching and lack of biblical understanding, many people rebel against God's scripture because they've never heard it, they've never been taught it, they don't understand it, so they reject it. And they say, well, uh, it doesn't flow with my understanding, so I'm not going to accept it. However, the Bible is very clear. The word of God is very clear. They are children of God and they are the devil's children. That's a fact. Two kingdoms. God's kingdom, the devil's kingdom. We must understand that when we are born again, this means born from above. In John 3, 3, Jesus explains to Nicodemus, the high priest, we must be born again as in from heaven. Okay? And we must be born uh, um, of the, of uh, sorry, we must be born of the spirit and we must be born of water, which, which means baptism. Otherwise, we will not see the kingdom of heaven. Now, when we understand this, there's a process. So when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, then this process starts. We have a new spirit, a regenerated spirit. So remember, when we are born, we all, we are all the devil's children because none of us has been made righteous through Christ yet. So before I gave my life to Jesus and accepted him as Lord and Savior in 1980, before that, I was the devil's child. Wow. <laughs> but it's the truth. And sometimes I behaved like that. <laughs> I behaved like that as well. And I'm sure not just me, but all of you. <laughs> so when we have a new spirit, a regenerated spirit, this happens when we have a repentant heart before the Lord. And we surrender in totality to him and that we believe in Jesus Christ and in him alone as our Lord and Savior by faith and by faith alone. And when we experience this new birth in Christ, we know it. Okay. Because the Holy Spirit comes and lives in our body and it's different. We are different. We feel different. Okay. We think differently. And that's how we know that we are children of God. Let me ask you a question. Do you think Lazarus that was dead, was buried and raised to life by Jesus Christ knew that he was raised from the dead once he was back to life? I'm sure you're all saying absolutely. I can only imagine how Lazarus's life must have changed he died, and then suddenly he was alive, and everybody said, Jesus called you out of the grave on the fourth day. His life was changed. Everything about him changed. His thought processes, everything must have been, wow, I was dead, but now I'm alive again. In the natural, in the flesh. But I think there must have been a switch in his spirit as well. 
So he must have been pretty different in himself, but he also must have been treated differently by the people that are around him, his family and his friends, the people in his village. So let me ask you another question. When you were born again, did your life change drastically? The way Lazarus's life was changed. You don't have to answer. But I'm going to challenge you. I do believe there are many people who think they are Christians. They profess to be Christians. But sadly, they are deluded and believe the lie. You must say, George, where are you going with this? What does this mean? Well, just as Lazarus was raised from the dead and made alive by Christ, when Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, and he came out of the tomb, he was alive. So are we spiritually. When we accepted Jesus Christ, and we had a repentant heart, we repented and we said, Lord, you are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. The Holy Spirit came in us and the Spirit of the Lord comes and lives within us. So just as Lazarus had this experience in his life, so much so do we and we should. We were the devil's children. Sorry, we were the devil's children when we entered so we were the children, the devil's children, when we entered into this world. We became God's children when we received a regenerated spirit, a new heart. We became new. In other words, we were dead and then we became alive. Just like Lazarus was dead in the grave, we were dead in our sins. We belong to Satan. Then when we accepted Jesus, we were taken from this, the kingdom of darkness. We were translated into the kingdom of light. And then we became God's children. The devil's children, no more. People who say they are Christians and practice the ways of the world, the devil's kingdom, his ways, are deceived. And I'll tell you why. The scripture is clear. Let's go to Matthew 7, verse 21. Jesus declared to those who are deceived, they were deceived. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of the Father in heaven. And it goes on. Let's go to... Uh, Verse 23, and I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. The Greek word for lawlessness is anemia. It means wickedness. It means unrighteousness. It means sin. So many people that think they are Christians, they will get before the Lord and they will say, but Lord, Lord. And he'll say, depart from me. I don't know you. Because you practice lawlessness. They were deceived into believing they could be and do what they want and not obey the commandments that Jesus gave us. They weren't born again. They never had a regenerated spirit. In other words, people who proclaim to be a Christian <clears throat> but show no change in their behavior, excuse me, their speech and character. So we got to ask ourselves, do people or can people enter into the kingdom of heaven without a regenerated spirit, without showing any change in our behavior? I used to behave like this. Now I don't behave like this. And because that's unrighteous, now I'm righteous. I changed my speech. I don't use four-letter words. I don't carry on. I don't every swear every second word. Why? Because that's not godly. That's worldly. And my character, I used to do that. Now I don't do this anymore. Why? Because that's ungodly and now I'm godly. And and so now we need to have a look 
and challenge ourselves, there must be a clear change in us if we proclaim to be a Christian. We were like this, but now we're like this because the Spirit of God lives in us, the Holy Spirit lives in us, so we cannot go back to being children of the devil, okay? Because there's been a, a big change. It's like a dog going back to its vomit or a pig that's been washed now it goes back to a style in the muck. The process of a regenerated spirit will reveal the spirit in us. We will have no desire to follow the old self, to be that child of the devil. That's gone. Okay, We were dead, but now we are alive. We must hate the old self. I must, hold, must hate the old George that I was because I was a child of the devil. Now I'm a child of God. We must hate the sin. We must hate the, the, the sin of the world and the deeds of the world. So how can God, God's children, listen to false teachers and participate in their deeds? When the Holy Spirit will, will say, you can't. How can God's children accept everything that is evil to God? 1 John 4 verses 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, God says, whether they are of God. Because many, not a few, many false prophets and teachers have gone out into this world to lead people astray. That's what they do. They twist the word of God. They deceive you. So how can a child of God accept or tolerate or condone homosexuality, wickedness, deceit, proud, covetousness, undiscerning, unforgiving, etc.? We can read all of those if you go to Romans chapter 1, verses 29 onwards. It gives us a whole list. The scripture is clear. If we are God's children, we know we are very different to the devil's children. Why? Simply because we seek God and his word with passion and desire. Our heart's desire is to please God all the time. It's to get more knowledge, read the Bible, listen to messages that from, from people that aren't false teachers and prophets. If a person does not have this desire to grow spiritually nearer to God, if that person doesn't have the desire to be in the presence of God, to worship him, to go on your knees and pray in the morning and pray at night or while you're driving, pray. If prayer is not your lifestyle or talking to God is not your lifestyle, then I'm going to say that that person is not a child of God. There is no middle ground in the word of God. Jesus says in Revelations chapter 3, verse 15, I know your works, that you are cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. Verse 16. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. That's what Jesus thinks of a lukewarm person that thinks they are Christian. One foot in the world, one foot he thinks in with, with God. And many people are invited when they go to a church to say this prayer of acceptance, I accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You are now saved, you're part of the family. If there's no repentance, there's no regenerated heart. There's no sincerity in your conversion. There's no salvation. And it's so important for us to understand this, that we will have to give an account to God because 
the test that we went through earlier on, we know we are God's children. Why? Because we've changed. If you are a person and you think you are a Christian, but you're still in the world, then you're not, you're not a child of God, according to the Bible, according to the scripture that we've read. Let's go to John 10, verse 10. It says, the devil does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's the character of the devil. He's a liar. He's the father of lies. From the beginning, he's a murderer. But I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. See, God comes to give us life eternal life and life more abundantly. However, the thief, the devil, comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That's how we know who he is. That's why we can identify the, 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 uh, the devil's children. They come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. They don't have a heart after God. They have a heart after their own God. They themselves, they call themselves gods. Me, myself, and I, that is a satanic trait. They don't care about anybody except themselves. God's children must be 100% committed. Not 50%, 10%, 100% committed. Jesus says, follow me. Pick up your cross and follow me. That's what Jesus said. And he said to the, to the rich man that came to him, that wanted to follow him, he says, go, sell all you have, give it to the poor, give it to the poor, pick up your cross and follow me. He never did that. Why? Because he had much. He wasn't prepared to get rid of everything that he had and follow Jesus Christ. So children of God can be blessed, and we are financially blessed because we are God's children. But the moment we take our wealth and our money and we put it before God and say, I did this, then we have a problem because then God says, oh, oh stop. And that's why so many people lose everything. You see, it's, it's idolatry. You love your money. You love your business, you love your Porsche, you love everything else before God. And that's a sign, a sure sign, you cannot be a child of God because we put God first. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. Please note, he doesn't define Mercedes Benz or Porsches or villas or homes overseas or whatever. That's the world's riches. The children of God, us, we believe that we can help others. God blesses us to be a blessing to others. And for us, as children of the Most High God, we know it's better to give than to receive. So if you find yourself wondering whether you don't meet the criteria that God prescribes, then I would suggest you go onto your knees Repent before God and ask him to forgive you and to commit your life to serving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now, I know to the home fellowship, you've done that. But to others that do watch the video on my YouTube channel, they might not know. And that's why I'm saying this. We must acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior by faith. And Jesus is the only way to heaven. God will hear your cry and he will show you mercy. Christ will accept you as his own. There's no way into heaven except the narrow gate that we spoke about. So let's go to Matthew 7, verse 13 and 14. And we're going to close with this. Enter by the narrow gate. Who's the narrow gate? Jesus. Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, Satan, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. 
And there are just a few who go in by it. That's not what it says. And there are many who go in by the broad gate. Jesus tells us only few, only a few find Jesus the narrow gate. Many, many find the, 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 the broad way, which is through Satan. And he tells us many go in by it. Verse 14, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. So I'd like to end with this just to encourage you is that we know we are children of God because we know it. We are totally different to Satan's children that are out in the world. Why? Because they're different to us. Okay, We are God's children. We saw the character in John 10.10, 10, the devil comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. But God comes to give us life and life more abundantly. So to encourage you is this, that we know we are God's children. But we can also hone our characters, hone who we are, hone the skill of learning the word of God. Because if we don't know the word of God, we can be deceived. We can be led off the path that God has, has, has prepared for us. So my encouragement to you tonight is know who you are in Christ. Know that you are God's child and that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Because we know within our hearts, we have the assurance in our hearts, knowing that we belong to Christ. As I said, our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. When the time comes and we meet our Lord and Savior, we will be like him because we are robed in his righteousness. Anyway, I thank, thank you for the time that you've taken to listen to this message. I hope that it's created an awareness in your life, that it's created an awareness in you to, to be more aware of the word of God, that it creates a desire to spend more time with God, that it creates this desire to study the word and get to know it. Because we are children of the most high God. And if if we find that boring and we don't want to spend time with God, the question is, why do you want to go to heaven then? <laughs> Good with all. Thank you very much. And I really thank you for this time that we've been able to to um to talk about the Lord.